Good morning folks, welcome along to the brew shed. Oh, Saturday morning, bright and early, in before the cleaners as they say. And that is because I wanted to give you guys an update on what we've been doing with the brew shed and the kitchen and everything else and God, it's been a slog. So, what's been going on here at the brew shed? Lots and lots and lots. We've had the chef working with us, Tom, for the past couple of weeks. We've been in the kitchen, plans have changed considerably from what they were initially and we've had to do quite a lot of work that we didn't intend to do. We've run over budget by quite a bit. We've had to borrow some money from the bank to do all these jobs. Not what we wanted to do, but ultimately in order for this part of the business to be a success it needed funding so that's what we decided to go ahead and punt for. So let me take off the tripod and we'll uh, have a buzz around into the kitchen and we'll talk about some of the pieces of equipment that we've installed. We'll have a sneak peek at the menu, yes we've got the menu together and then we'll probably go into the brewery, have a quick uh, kind of overview in there as to what's going on and then we'll call it a day. So let me come and grab that tripod. Right we're now in first person shoot em up mode and of course you've seen the restaurant area before but we do have plans in place to change how this is all going to look i've got a couple of rough sketched out drawings that i can put in now to give you an idea as to what we're going to be doing but ultimately this section along the back of this chair here between these two chairs here uh, the back of this door and between that chair and that chair, or seating bench, uh, we're going to have to install some type of uh, kind of privacy barrier, if you like. It's basically just going to be a piece of timber, uh, a frame, a timber frame, stained the same colour as these chairs, uh, just so people's heads and arms aren't going, uh, you know, over the backs of the chairs. Let's say there was another client sat at the back, you know, just to keep them apart so you have a little bit of privacy and you can enjoy your meal in peace. We're also going to do a bit of decorating in here. There's some things to go on the wall. We're going to change the light fittings and whatnot. As a side note, you'll notice this little chimney outside. Well, we've got new neighbours, folks. Yes, indeed we do. Here's one of their menus. We are now uh, adjoined with saucy pizza company next door so we're not going to put pizza on our menu but they do fantastically delicious ones should you want one if you're in the area anyway i digress let's head into the kitchen and have a look what we've done here we are so as you can see it's still very much a work in progress but we are beginning to see things coming in now such as ingredients, spices, herbs, oils, all that kind of jazz. And even some of Tom's homemade pickle lily, which is fermenting away nicely. So let's have a quick rundown as to what we've done in here and indeed why we've done it. So outside we've had to change the extractor fan, which pulls uh, all of the steam and cooking uh, aromas out and we've had to change it for one that fits into the stack as you can see on this clip here that little band in the section there is the new fan it was really quite expensive but that fan works in synchronicity I think that's a word with this set of ducting here so this is the intake which uh, Tom and I installed just last week and a very good job we've done indeed uh, and that all is controlled via this panel here which is known as a gas interlock so let me run it through let me run let me run through it yeah yeah let me run through it for you so gas safety interlock we've got the gas engineer coming out on Monday and he's going to install all the pipe work and plumb the cooker and this humongous gas grill in. 
and the regulations, the law, the law states that if you have any gas appliances in a commercial kitchen, then you have to have sufficient extraction to remove uh, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, and everything else that is uh, kind of nasty and goes with it. Um, and if you don't have that fan extraction working, then you need a system which turns the gas off at the mains. Say hello to safety interlock. So this little boy here is wired into a solenoid valve on the gas pipe. And that solenoid valve is closed, as you can see. The air flows off, so the gas is off. And in order for us to turn that on, we need to have both the extractor and the intake operating at the sufficient extraction rate and then the solenoid will open up so here's a little test it's going to get a bit noisy but there's the extractor as you can see the lights on so we have air being sucked out and air being blown in but it is still quite early this morning so we'll turn that off I'm sure we've got a few people upstairs who might be on like uh, nights or something and there we go the gas light goes out so now you wouldn't have any gas to your appliances so that means that we will pass the British standard 4652 or whatever it is anyway who cares what number is that is the gas interlock and that is an integral part of the kitchen which we didn't know about but now we do uh, here of course we've got all the storage rack in for storage yeah you know what I mean um, and then this is something that we made as well this is our heated pass so let me just take you around to the other side this is something I'm quite proud of uh, Tom and I knocked it together in an afternoon so it plugs in over here heated pass and that's on its own separate circuit as you can see which runs from this 40 amp uh, box want of a better word there's a big six eight millimeter square cable running downstairs provides power for both that and the interlock system it was a cooker feed but we don't have a cooker in here so it's not required anymore anyway let's talk a little bit about this heat lamp and gantry so if you look underneath you'll see we have heat lamps under both shelves to keep food warm and these are wired into a little control panel that I made because we wanted to know if we could have some uh, variability on the heat you know so it wasn't always running at full chooch when we didn't need it if, we, if there wasn't any uh, checks on service so I've also incorporated on here a 13 amp socket with an RCD so if we're using any appliances such as mixers or food processors or slow cookers they can be put on the prep table and left or used quite safely and that will protect any of the operatives if you like we'll turn the heat lamp on there you can see it says power there and if we look underneath you'll see that we do indeed have heat and the heat is controlled by this uh, variable controller on the front here I forget what they're called but most of you in the know will know so that's one of the other jobs that we've done that's ready to go we've also got our hand wash station in position all of the electrics are in for the fryers we've got four deep fat fryers here so we can have meat vegetarian and a gluten-free option and all that kind of goody 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 stuff and then we've got all the pots and pans have been delivered yeah that was a big 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 order and also underneath here we have all the crockery and the microwave and other things for service over in this area we've changed out this sink I don't know if you guys will recall this was like a pot wash area uh, for the glass wash now the glass wash station has its own little sink for waste out of pint glasses and what have you 
and this is a relatively compact because we're short on space relatively compact area for pot washing and food prep not at the same time of course though uh, we've also put some edge banding around the base of the walls and floor to prevent any ingress of moisture getting underneath the flooring and uh, yeah we've got the fridge and freezer installed this was a big tricky scenario getting this bad boy in I'm not sure if I've spoken to you guys about it before but wow she is a beast they're not turned on at the moment but uh, they have been tested and they are ready to go um, so also under the fryers I might just point out I picked up a, an oil filter so every night we can drop the oil out of the fryers and remove any bits and clean the elements on a daily basis which Tom's got in his cleaning rotor so in order for our super duper chef to uh, do his job proper as they say I've installed him a little office so he's got a desk this is his own chair that he brought in and a little area where he can sit and do all of the relevant paperwork to make sure that the kitchen conforms to all the environmental health standards and he can order food and ingredients when required undisturbed if you like from the uh, hustle and bustle of the kitchen area we've also got another chef Matt starting as well when we open up and we're opening next week I think these are some of Tom's knives which he's bought especially for here they're very nice indeed I like them Japanese um, and yeah there was one more thing I want to talk to you guys about or at least show you we've got some push plates for the doors you'll see on that door there I've changed all these push plates out from these horrible painted ones to nice stainless steel but yes what I wanted to give you was a Sneeko Pico at the menu so here we are what do you think to this so starters to begin the brew shed artisan kitchen we have spicy coated white bait homemade soup chefs ham hock terrine breaded halloumi caesar salad glazed chicken wingos and mac and cheese and then uh, for the main course we've got steak and harrison's ale pie of course we're using as much of our product in the kitchen as possible spice red pepper linguine char grilled chicken harrison's beer battered cod loin halloumi and vegetable skewers ribeye steak falafel burger baked salmon and a steak burger and then sides we've got chips mash new potatoes fresh veg house salad beer battered onion rings and grilled garlic bread and then the big sharers we have a tomahawk steak on there which uh, we're going to try it out for a little bit it was quite an impressive dish uh, but we'll see if that stays on the menu or not because it's very very expensive and the antipasti platter with a cheese board for a share section we also have a breakfast menu coming online and a Sunday lunch menu um, but they are still being processed at the moment so there we go can you believe it we pretty much have a fully functioning kitchen we have actually cooked food in here as well last week Tom and I had some cheeky chip butties and gave the fryers a quick test something to note as well we've also got all our cutlery up here so we, you can see knives and forks and all that other jazz um, worth mentioning we also have a children's menu to put together as well which is something that we've not finished and yeah it's been a very very stressful couple of weeks it's been absolutely full on Tom and I have been here many a night until uh, 9 10 o'clock and we've really struggled to get all the jobs in and done on time but we've about managed it so gas engineer on Monday installation complete by Tuesday hopefully and then from Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday we're going to be cooking every single dish on the menu taking photographs so that we know that what we want them to look like when they go out for consistency but also for some social media posts as well to promote what we're going to be making here 
and then on Monday the 9th I think it is we're gonna open the doors we're doing it on a Monday because we're hoping it won't be as busy and full on so we can kind of ramp up on, um, on on cooking on the kitchen if you like but yeah very exciting very nerve-wracking very stressful but hey we're doing it and it's looking promising so that's enough of me waffling let's go into the brewery and we'll have a quick look at some of the things that we've been doing in there and then we'll cut to the doggos running around because everybody loves that don't they so one of the things that we did at the brewery is uh, I've started to hit the driveway with the jet wash and get it cleaned up a little bit and it looks fantastic but let's go inside to what is an absolute mess and uh, well it doesn't look all that bad to be honest but it feels like it's a mess and we definitely need to do something with it so um, the intake for the pub the intake for the kitchen the air intake has you can see the size of the ducts in really can't you needs to have a, a hydroscopic filter in there to keep out nasties such as wasps and flies and all that kind of jazz and of course dust so that's what these are so that's a spare um, we have a couple of fans here as well from a friend of ours we did a bit of a trade for some uh, bottled beers and these fans are going to go into the cellar to provide extraction because we're beginning to get a bit of a damp issue in there because there isn't enough proper ventilation and then yeah looking in here you can see uh, what we've been up to Gemma thankfully has helped us out massively by doing all the casking for us this week I brewed three batches of beer um, as you can see by the uh, temperature on the side of the FV there we go that one's got beer in and then four and five have beer in for some reason that only the black tilt is showing up so uh, we'll have to investigate what's going on there these are some of the changes that we're going to have in the restaurant some of the lampshades that we've picked up to change out to give it a little bit more you know depth of feel if you like some of the light bulbs bloody hell they're expensive let me tell you and just simple stuff like we got cheap salt cellars and vinegar bottles just for now from Dunelm because they're a pound each and when we've got some spare cash we might upgrade on those we also brought in yesterday quite a bit of timber to do that um, that seating area the expansion of the seating area that's what all this timber is down here um, I picked up a big from B&Q a K's container these is this is one of the thickest plastic containers I've ever found and I've got this to make a soak tank so I can strip down the components on the brew kit and we can soak them in the caustic for however long we want to to get rid of any biofilms or anything like that in any dead legs of the pipework that uh, don't get hit by by regular cleaning so that's pretty pretty good advice to do something like that a couple of times a year um, we pulled out as well the pilot kit to give it a good clean it was showing signs of uh, of neglect where we'd brewed there was a little bit of mildew and stuff growing on the framework so that went outside and was jet washed and then at the same time I came in and we jet washed the floor which unfortunately stripped off most of the paint but this floor has been an ongoing problem for us from day one because way back in the day and I'm talking maybe in the 60s or 70s this was actually a car garage so I imagine there would have been quite a lot of oil impregnated into this concrete on the floor and that's making it very difficult for the paint to stick to so as I saw some of the paint already starting to flake and come up I thought you know what just carry on get the whole thing stripped back let's proper wash it down let's make it all nice and level let's fill in the cracks properly give it an acid wash and attack it with a really good brand of paint and hopefully that will be that if it fails then I'm just gonna leave it as it is and uh, we're just gonna have to live with it but I'll give it one more try keep throwing money at paint for this thing and it's yeah 
it's irritating me a little bit. So let's go past the grain store, as you can see we've just got some grain in for brewing this week, and into the workshop, you guys have not been in here for a couple of months, as you can see it's pretty much the same, we've got a new vacuum cleaner joining the club at the moment, uh, stainless steel bench over there which the plasma cutter is sat on, and I've moved the welder, the MIG welder or MAG welder over to that back wall so we've got everything on that back wall and it's kind of freed up a little bit of space here so I can swing a cat a little bit easier if you like but that's it I think folks that pretty much wraps it up we've also got a little experiment at home going on with some um, rare breed chicken eggs uh, it was February when I bought them off eBay though so they may not hatch we bought a dozen we've lost six already they didn't develop it's the wrong time of year frankly but uh, if that happens then well might be able to show you a video next week or so with some little baby chicks on because they're due to hatch today if they're gonna hatch at all we candle them we think we've got six we might end up with none such is life anyway thanks for tuning in folks uh, that's Harrison's Brewery and the Brew Shed signing out for now here are some doggos Enjoy.